On PC32 part one, we're going to talk about four of the types of transformations in a coordinate plane that we'll be working with. So first you should know that in any transformation, we'll use ordered pair rules. So if you're starting with the points X, Y, you can describe your rule by saying add H, add K, and this is the notation we will use for that. So we're asked to move triangle EFG four units to the left and one unit up. And we are going to start by just figuring out, okay, where is points E, F, and G? So when I look at my graph, E is at negative two, positive two. F is at one, zero. And G is at two, three. And now I'm going to take each one of those points and move it four to the left and one up. So I'm taking point E and I'm going one, two, three, four over, one up, and I'm going to label that as E prime. So E with a little apostrophe up top. I'm going to do the same thing with F, move it over one, two, three, four, and up one. And I'll label that F prime. And with G, I'll move it over one, two, three, four, and up one, and label that point G prime. So I get a lovely triangle that looks like this. And now I'm going to look at where those points landed and see if I can figure out a rule that I can use rather than doing it by hand each time. So E ended up at negative six, positive three. F prime ended up at negative 3, positive 1, and G prime ended up at negative 2, positive 4. So when I look just at this ordered pair, I can see that to get from this Y or X value to that, I had to subtract 4. Same thing with my other two X values. So I could write my rule as x, y, take that and becomes x minus 4. With my y values, 2 to 3 I added 1, 0 to 1 I added 1, 3 to 4 I added 1. So my rule becomes y plus 1. So when I'm doing a transformation, my rule is going to be x plus or minus something, y plus or minus something. Whatever I'm adding here, if I'm adding That means I'm moving to the right. Subtracting moves to the left. Similarly, if I add to my y value, I'm moving up. If I subtract, I'm moving down. So I can tell just based on the rule what I need to add or subtract to each coordinate. This time we're going to reflect across the y-axis. I'm going to fill my points in again, and I know this resolution is a little bit lower. So this time it's 2, and I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. F is at 2, 1, and G is at 6, 1. I'm going to go ahead and reflect that. So if I were to fold across the y-axis, E prime lands right here, F prime lands there, and G prime is another four units from that, so right here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in where E prime, F prime, and G prime landed, and then see if I can figure out a rule for when I reflect across the y-axis. So E prime landed at negative 2, positive 5. F prime landed at negative 2, positive 1. And G prime ended up at negative 6, positive 1. And if I look just at my numbers, I can see that my Y values stayed the same. My X values became negative. So I could write this rule as XY becomes negative x, positive y. And this is counterintuitive because we reflected across the y-axis. So our gut says, well, gee, shouldn't we make the y negative? But we're folding across the y, 
so the x is the one that becomes negative. We'll do the same thing with the x-axis now. And I'm going to copy and paste those coordinates from before because it's the exact same triangle. This time, f prime lands right here. g prime lands right there. And e prime will land down here. So e prime is at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for my y value, positive 2 still for my x. f is also still at positive 2 for its x, negative 1 for y, and g is at positive 6 for my x value, and negative 1 for my y value. When I look just at my ordered pairs, I can see pretty quickly that this time just the opposite happened. My y values became negative. So my rule could be written as xy becomes x negative y. And again, this is counterintuitive because we reflected across the x-axis, the y became negative. So when you reflect, it's the opposite of what you think it should be. Okay, if you're reflecting across the y, the x becomes negative. Reflect across the x, y becomes negative. The last one we're going to do is we're going to reflect across the line y equals x. So I'm reflecting across that line, and that was a terrible line. So I'm reflecting across this pink line. And on this one, f prime will end up right here. When I fold across that line, e prime ends up right here, and g prime, when I fold across that diagonal line, ends up right here. So this one's a little bit trickier to do in your mind's eye, but hopefully you can see how if I were to fold in, those pieces would match up. I'm going to go ahead and figure out where my ordered pair lands. So this time e prime is at 5, 2, f prime is at 1, 2, and g prime is at 1, 6. And if I look just at those ordered pairs, I can see that x, y became y, x. So if I flip the order of my numbers, I get a reflection across the line y equals x. So here's a little cheat sheet for you to review if I have a rule like x, y uh, becomes x plus h, y plus k. I know that that is a translation by the units h, k. So I'm adding h to every unit, adding k to every y value. If I make the x negative, that is a reflection across the y axis, which is counterintuitive. If I make the y negative, that is a reflection across the x-axis. Again, a little counterintuitive. And if I flip my x and y, that is a reflection across the line y equals x.